Okay, great. So we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, I'll be posting the Menti link shortly in uh, the space. So look out for that so that you can send us uh, your questions. Uh, and welcome everybody to Horizon Weekly Insider number 158. Today is Monday, October 24th, and please be aware that this call is being recorded and will be available for you to check out later on the Horizon podcast. Please also remember to send us your questions for the live Q&A at the end of the chat. And uh, let's go ahead. We're going to kick off our updates a little differently today. We're going to go ahead and start with Victor for the product updates. Hi, everyone, and thanks for having me. Uh, for this week, uh, I can uh, uh, say that, uh, as promised, we have started deploying uh, some contracts, uh, some contracts to, to our AVM sidechain in testnet. Uh, currently, we have the first uh, Web3 minting page deployed and uh, the contract for the NFT collection that can be uh, that is backing up uh, that one. Uh, we have also deployed uh, our EVM sidechain, uh, always milestone two, in a separate environment that is uh, internal testnet for uh, starting seeing uh, uh, how this is performing with uh, lower the block time. So we will pass from two minutes to 12 seconds of block generation time. And uh, this will speed up also the deployment of uh, the next dApps. On the documentation side, we have created a specific repository with the code example to run uh, using Truffle, for example, that uh, will be uh, handed over to our technical writer for uh, adding uh, it as well to our official documentation for the VM sidechain. And we plan to do the same also for other frameworks, uh, the past that we have tested. I remember it's uh, uh, Ethers uh, with Hearted and uh, also Revix. And uh, next to follow was uh, uh, Truffle that, uh, let's say, for this part of the repository is currently under review. Um, lately, we have, uh, let's say, see uh, our strategy team growing a lot, and uh, we are starting collecting uh, the uh, the fruits of, uh, of this because we are um, now... Um, let's say ready to start uh, discussing some of the go to market, uh, and uh, we are targeting to be among the top five, uh, uh, top 50 uh, protocols out there in three months. Um, in uh, let's say the first month since the mainnet launch, actually, three months, and we are targeting to achieve that by moving in some directions, not just one. One uh, is the outreach, the other is documentation, other is uh, to prepare and uh, have uh, deployed since day one or uh, in the first days uh, that we are live, some dApps. Uh, and uh, let's say by also uh, having tools ready for our, uh, um, for our EVM. Uh, as we said some uh, weeks ago, we have sacrificed an early go to market to improve our chain, uh, our chain security. And um, we are sure that now this move uh, together with the audit we are going through will be appreciated by, by many. So um, we plan to uh, achieve being in the top 50 by making, in, uh, by, by making it easy for uh, consumers as we are proving uh, with uh, token mint and cobalt uh, to, to use a site and to use uh, an Ethereum virtual machine environment and uh, crypto in general. Uh, by making it familiar for developers, uh, for providing uh, by providing compatibility with the, the tools that they are already using on other networks, uh, for example, Ethereum itself. And uh, on another perspective, we are making uh, um, this EVM sidechain complete since day one for consumers uh, uh, with either uh, support for new DApps developers or developers in general that want to face. Uh, uh, their um, expertise to another challenge uh, by becoming also Web3 developers, uh, by giving uh, uh, all the tools they require, all the onboarding they require, start from our, uh, starting from our uh, official documentation of the EVM, and uh, also by outreaching to the, let's say, well-known protocols or, uh, um, let's say, every kind of, uh, um, let's say, family of, Dapps uh, that can be found out there. 
and this uh, starting uh, let's say from the early days of our EVM sidechain. Uh, that's all uh, I have here. I uh, give you the word back. Here we go. Bye. Thank you. Now I'd like to welcome Angie for the token and updates. Thanks, Erica, and hi, everyone. Happy Monday. So let's see, some updates on the NFT released on Mainnet uh, for Token Mint, which we know it's upcoming uh, in the next few weeks. I uh, promise you that we're working uh, very hard on the, uh, some fixes right now of the token generator with the NFT features. So those are ongoing. And we're also um, going to be receiving uh, some reports as well on other ongoing audits regarding the Block Explorer for Token Mint, both the front end and the back end. So those efforts are also ongoing. And then we would need to um, make the preparations and uh, 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 prepare for the release to main it in the upcoming few weeks. So excited for that. Uh, and and um, yeah, I'll keep you, I'll keep you posted on that. Uh, there's other uh, various work streams regarding the EVM uh, tool support. Um, as you know, Cobalt, our web uh, wallet, uh, would also have EVM support. Uh, some of the things we're working on right now is, for example, to have the ability to display EVM networks and Zen balances uh, in Cobalt. All of this is being developed right now and uh, or ongoing um, testing as well. It's under feature flag, but certainly uh, we are uh, emphasizing a lot of uh, EVM support for our web wallet to, to have those features. Uh, also working on a sidechain faucet, uh, and this is basically would allow users to claim Testnet Zen from Cobalt uh, directly. Uh, and this could be Testnet Zen that can be used on Token Mint uh, sidechain and on the EVM sidechain as well. So pretty excited for, for those. Uh, efforts. Also, a couple of other uh, quick things. We're also working on the EVM uh, website, which is in progress. And this, of course, includes not only a landing page, but also uh, links to the Explorer, all the community interaction, uh, academy uh, documentation as well, which is a very big effort. And we really want to make a very, a very straightforward process for developers, companies, partners to integrate with our EVM. Um, as well as the faucet that I just uh, mentioned. So all of that is in, is in progress. And uh, yeah, that's it from, from my side. Thanks, everybody. And back to you, Erika. Thank you, Angie. And now I'd like to welcome Roberto for the engineering updates. Thank you, Erika. And... I almost went. Oh, sorry about that. I, I uh -huh. thought you meant me, Erika. <laughs> oh, it's the same, same. <laughs> Rob, it's the same. <laughs> Okay, all right. Hey, hello, everybody. And uh, okay, so, so let's get started with the uh, updates for the engineering department. Uh, Zendu first, okay, release version 3.2.0 has been released. The old version officially deprecated on October 21st. So every major partner upgraded successfully, thanks also to our support. Uh, the other work stream is management of the key rotation, uh, the code modification of the proof verifier being completed and submitted for internal review. And we are also working on another feature regarding non season sidechain. So we have reviewed the code change we did previously on the quality setting. So it's a field in the certificate, currently indicate the number of certifiers. Of course, the semantic of the field it depends on the specific sidechain uh, implementation. So this field was cryptographically enforced to zero. Uh, after a careful evaluation, we have decided to revert to the previous code, and this activity is in progress. Uh, for what regards Blaze, okay, specifically key rotation management, we are moving forward with circuit integration, and target release here is 060. Uh, the sign of sidechain to sidechain communication protocol is ongoing. Now, the focus is on proof generation logic. We have also some updates regarding Spark's library. Okay, we have a release candidate nine, it's available. Uh, it's a not fix required by bug we hit during the EVM milestone two deployment. Uh, for Spark's, uh, Scala version has been updated, it will be included in release candidate 
10 or higher, okay, we don't know yet. And enhancement identified during the last audit, they've all been tracked and the implementation of each of them is in progress. And last but not least for the uh, uh, Blaze update, the entire Blaze code base has been audited and the audit starting, so we are waiting, started officially, so we are waiting for the feedback. Okay, for what regard the EVM, uh, Milestone 2 is deployed on testnet, so we are reviewing the code base, focusing on the announcement that were previously identified, and uh, of course, having now a working code, other potential in our area of improvements are identified, and so we'll also be working on that. Uh, collaboration with the smart, smart contract team is ongoing. We have addressed the issue clarification that came out from the first round. Uh, this activity will proceed, so we acknowledge all of the uh, issue clarification, something missing that was uh, required by the previous activity, but there will be another round and there will be a follow-up on that as well. Also, we're focusing on the VM documentation. Uh, this is available for internal review. We are addressing comments and finalizing some part uh, of the document. Lastly, okay, the proving system uh, accomplishment. Uh, we have a Plonky 2 coprocessor submitted for internal review. We are, we are addressing the internal comments. So we are basically finished. <laughs> okay, it's a very last minute update. So this is uh, internally approved. approved. Uh, other topics we are working on. Security level in Plunky 2, this has been documented again in the uh, update of the last minute, and it's shared internally, so we are waiting to collect all the uh, uh, comments from the team. The performance to aggregate and base proof with Plunky 2 has been estimated. We are prototyping a verifier for risk zero base proof, and this work is in progress, so we need to better define the scope, but the final uh, uh, final goal is to have a proof of concept and uh, a generic gadget to verify risk zero proof in Plonky 2. And also other activity in the last week were brainstorming with the product and strategy team. So there were a lot of interaction and uh, uh, a very interesting, a very interesting idea. Okay, so these were the main points for this weekly insider and back to you, Erika. Thank you, Roberto. And now I'd like to welcome Bono for the BD updates. Hello, everyone. Happy Monday. So as, as Roberto said, we had a successful deprecation of Zen 3.1.0 last Friday, October 21st. And only uh, very few partners needed our support post-deprecation. And many we already and upgraded to the latest version several days before Friday, including largest mining pools and exchanges, which shows the level of support and care we get from them. It is also worth noting that um, we always get a very positive feedback for, for, for the ample time and support we give our partners during the whole upgrade process. And I would like to say a big thank you to all our partners who have upgraded to the latest version of our software and continue to support us. At the same time, huge thank you to our engineering products, tools, infra, and the rest of the team involved in the whole process to make uh, all this upgrade process easy first for our partners and for me as well. Apart from this, we have a new integration to announce, uh, which is always a bit rare during the beer market. Um, we expanded our existing integration at cake.io, which is our uh, one of the largest international exchanges and now you can use uh, your centralized platform for Zen lending, which is quite a nice new use case. Not not new, but yeah, yet another venue to for Zen for such a use case. Big thank you to our partner Gate.io Gate for that as well. That's all from me. Back to you, Erica. Thank you, Vano. And now I'd like to welcome Lucy for the marketing updates. Hello everyone, happy Monday. Uh, so we released the uh, uh, Q3 review uh, this week. Uh, also we released the several Zencon Zero main stage presentations last week. 
uh, there are some of my favorite talks and discussions from Zenkang Zero, including the uh, spotlight from Rob on Horizon Labs in Horizon, the uh, Horizon OG panel, and also the panel on how to grow the um, Horizon ecosystem through investments and introducing L, um, HL builders. So uh, please check them out on our YouTube channel and we will be releasing more this week. Uh, Angie mentioned the token and NFT uh, functionality coming to uh, mainnet very soon. Uh, that's super exciting. We'll be hosting a uh, uh, NFT competition to celebrate the uh, launch, so please stay tuned. Meanwhile, you can uh, try out the NFT functionality on, on the tokenment uh, testnet. Also, as mentioned last week, uh, there is uh, uh, now a Discord server for Punks token. So if you are Punks holders and fans, please be sure to, uh, to join the uh, uh, Punks Discord so you don't miss out on game streaming events like the one that we just had last weekend. Uh, airdrops and also new uh, game releases. Um, and uh, um, Halloween is just around the corner. I believe uh, um, Eric has some information on uh, some activities that we will have uh, uh, for Halloween. Back to you, Erica. Yeah. Thank you, Lucy. So we are uh, expecting a fun little Halloween uh, gaming competition or stream via the Punks Discord around Halloween featuring one of our own evangelists, uh, PVM. Uh, so if you guys tuned in for the stream uh, on the Punks Discord this weekend where Andrew was playing Punks Hero and airdropping a whole bunch of Punks tokens to people watching, it'll be something very similar and they have let us know that they're going to be releasing more information on any competitions or uh, airdrops that they'll be hosting around that event. It looks like they are targeting uh, Halloween day as the day for the event. So be sure to follow them on Discord as well as Twitter so that you can get the latest updates and we'll likely be sharing information on it, on it as well as the day comes a little sooner. Thank you. And now I'd like to welcome Rob for the Leadership Insights and the Q&A session. Okay, so Rob, not Roberto. This time, yes. <laughs> okay, cool. And guys, sorry for the bad Roberto joke. It is Spanish, I think, or, or maybe Italian for Rob as well. Um, Andrew, I, I want some punks tokens. Uh, I heard airdrop, and I definitely want to check out that demo. Uh, highly recommend it, piggybacking on Erica's comments. Uh, but guys, what I want to talk about today, uh, really the big push, well, I'd say three main themes. One, just because I like things in threes, it, tends to go better that way. But EVM, guys, the EVM demo that I saw last week on the product council session was just absolutely fantastic. And just realigning the, the at least thus far, the internal sessions that we have, um, instead of just kind of um, you know updates on task completions and stuff like that, or project plans. Yes, we get that as well, but now we're actually linking, uh, tying them all to demos so that we can actually see tangible results and things that are just moving. And guys, they're really moving. So this was uh, milestone two, the really big, I would say a huge milestone because it connects our EVM, or I would say it completes our EVM uh, in the Ethereum sense. So we're still not done with this project. It's still not on mainnet, but we have the milestone two version of our EVM on, you know, thus far, uh, you know, private uh, test net. So we will open that to the public kind of soon-ish, you know, guys, over the coming month-ish or so. Um, but really important delivery for us because now we can see actual, like we can see the Ethereum experience happening and we can one, like really just nail down like bugs as they arise, or if things aren't working exactly like they're supposed to work, we can find out immediately because they're in live environments and we're battering this thing like crazy. But the other important thing is getting the actual Ethereum experience and Ethereum experience being, uh, I got to witness our team and Victor, thank you. Uh, minting an ERC-20, the ERC-20 going to a MetaMask wallet, um, seeing this done in Remix, so dev environments right there, uh, popular with the Ethereum dev world. I got to see our Tixel partners uh, working with Hardhat, um, I, you know, IDE. So I got to see a bunch of things that are just part of the Ethereum world, and we got to see it happening 
on Horizon. Now, you know, testnet version of Horizon, but the fact that we can actually see all of this happening, basically the full possibilities and potential of Ethereum smart contracting now in Horizon. Um, clearly testnet, and we have a lot of work to do still to get this to mainnet, so I'm not trying to get ahead of ourselves here. Um, but for the first time, I got to see uh, utility for Zen beyond just a, you know, a cryptocurrency and like a fee on a transaction for cryptocurrency. Now, of course, yes, we have token mint and token mints in production on mainnet, um, but still like to see uh, Zen use this gas for computation on a virtual machine, an Ethereum virtual machine was just absolutely huge and stunning for me after all of these years to finally see this basic utility that we've wanted for a while. I remember like Dean and I uh, years ago, just kind of, uh, I, I don't want to say lamenting, but screaming that we wanted, back then we were calling it Zentherium, but we knew that this was a big deal. We knew that this was an emerging standard of our industry and therefore the world as this industry grows. And now we have it. We have it in Horizon. This is a huge de uh, development and accomplishment for the team. What's next? What's next is we're going to burn down a bunch of other tasks that are needed to get this thing into production and a whole bunch of structured testing so that, we, you know, testing and auditing and then find fixing from audits just so that we know when we go live and on mainnet, we're going live with something that we have uh, strong confidence in. So anyway, a lot coming there. We're, we're actually formalizing one more called structured milestone. Uh, this is one that layers in the new circuit that's already in production should, I believe, in the next couple or two or three weeks uh, be completing development. And then we'll get that into a live environment. And then all the testing and auditing fun begins. And then we push this this uh, baby of ours into mainnet early next year, so in Q1 of next year. Anyway, so huge congratulations to the team, guys. And that's part of it because we're not just, you know, we're, we're a new org today from what we were years ago. and that new org is one that doesn't just go live with software or actually going live with uh, a very sophisticated and well thought out plan. We call it our go to market plan for this thing. So there's a lot that goes along with that. So we have a robust plan now for making this a major EVM platform in our industry. And there's a lot of thought that's gone into it and continues to go into it. And as we get specific plans matured, we'll be really releasing this stuff to you guys. But there's things like, you know, what happens the first 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, and so forth, and then beyond there. What are we going live with on day one? What will make this a meaningful delivery, you know, in terms of what dApps does it need? What uh, bridge or bridges does it need into which environments, like Ethereum, um, you know, is the most likely one. What else is, is going to be part of that? So we actually have KPIs internally. Uh, we're not, you know, announcing these yet until we're very confident that these are the right KPIs. And we get the magnitudes correct, but these include things like number of uh, contracts, number of wallets, uh, number of or amount of TVL on chain, total value lock. So very thought out things that position ourselves relative to other competitors in that EVM class of projects. Uh, and I'm really pumped for it. So anyway, just uh, more to come on it. I just want you guys to know that we have a much more structured uh, approach to things now, a much more sophisticated organization. We have a lot of resources that we're putting towards this. This is a really big deal, and we're going to make sure it's successful. Okay, in other news, we're, we're now finally pushing into the sidechain to sidechain work beyond just design. So now the only thing I'll mention here is now we have a whole team working on it, and uh, there'll be more news to come on when we're going to get the sidechain to sidechain uh, protocol out there. Now, what it's going to mean, and I think this is going to be our bread and butter as an ecosystem, is this will be a provable bridge between blockchains that exist in the horizon ecosystem. Important because as we go out there and we try to convince people to you know, deploy their uh, Web3 or you know, L1's experience that they're looking for in our world, we're pitching them uh, on the value prop of, guys, you will have provable bridges between chains. So it's a really big deal. It's really important because if you, if you launch an L1 with us in the horizon, like a side chain in the horizon world, we want that side chain to be interoperable with other chains at your choice, in particular, like the public EVM. So if you were to launch uh, your own chain, you know, maybe it's another EVM chain within Horizon, we want your EVM chain to be able to communicate with and be able to send digital assets back and forth to the public EVM that we're launching. Anyway, so more to come on that. We'll get uh, more details to you, but it's a really big deal for us in terms of value prop for an ecosystem. And speaking of value prop for an ecosystem, we really do need to 
hone in, guys, on our differentiating strategy for Verizon. So internally within the org, this is something obviously for years we've been thinking about, and this project has evolved a lot over the years, but it's worth us taking the time and being very thoughtful and deliberate about where are we today? What does our technology architecture, our ecosystem, what does it do really well relative to others? Because the industry has evolved a lot in the last five years, and if we just stick you know, single-mindedly or you know, in a black and white way with what we were thinking five years ago, that may not be the best approach because there's a lot of new entrants into the market over the last five years that have done really well and carved out very nice niches for themselves. It's time for us to revisit where we are, what our capabilities are you know, today, near term and longer term, where we want to go and position this project. And when I say position, I mean, the world needs to know that you go to Horizon if you want X you know, if you want to do X, right? We need to determine what that X is, what that variable is. And I'll tell you just the internal uh, brainstorming, there, there are some different themes that are popping up, but we, we really do need to discuss this as a community and ecosystem. I like themes that revolve around security, dependability, like our chain never goes down. We have a heck of a lot of nodes that are out there. It's very resilient. We, we want kind of like a safe environment, put safe in quotes there because how safe can... You know, crypto is still experimental, guys. Let's not fool ourselves on that. But if you could do things like launch a private chain, and then when you feel safe about it or some level of comfort, maybe you could then make it go public. That could be a really big differentiator. Um, and it also goes towards lower risk as a platform. So if you hear that, I don't know, regu regulators still haven't provided a lot of clarity to this environment, maybe you want to do something in a private setting, but still connected to a public network such that you can make it all public one day when there's more clarity. These are the types of themes that I think also in, in, you know, uh, in, in totality uh, fit well with our original and still our current privacy mission. So privacy is really important for security, uh, for safety in, in the online world. So I think all of these things fit really well together with our original and current mission, but still differentiate us uh, you know, quite nicely in today's competitive landscape and anyway, more to come and we definitely want more thoughts from all of you guys so chime into the conversation on discord and you know we'll try to have our team work with the community more proactively because i think getting this differentiating message right is going to be probably the most important thing that we do while we're working on these big major technology deliveries let's make sure that when we go live with an ebm when we get our sidechain sidechain protocol out there as we're delivering sidechains let's make sure that they they're you know, go along somewhat of a consistent, coherent messaging so that we can really carve a niche for ourselves in this industry and make a name for Horizon. Anyway, I'll stop there, guys. I've talked for quite a bit, and we're exactly out of time. Okay. Well, we are out of time. So would you like to do the Q&A? Uh, you actually of inadvertently... No, no, I'm not trying that. <laughs> I'm not trying to get out of it. Let's do it. Okay. I was going to say you've inadvertently actually kind of answered the top question, uh, which was what will make Horizon's EVM more competitive than others? Or will there be better transactions per second or block finality? Um, is there anything else you'd like to, to say on that topic? Yeah, I mean, in terms of the technical uh, parameters that we're going to end up going live to production with, uh, TBD still. You heard some tantalizing stuff from Victor earlier. So the bottom line is we will make this a competitive EVM uh, in smart content code platform. That, that is for sure. And I'll tell you, it's even going beyond my expectations today of where I, I was thinking, where my head was a few months ago. A few months ago, the mandate to the team was just get, get an EVM live, guys. Like It's about time that we could do smart contracts on Horizon. Just get it live. Uh, and the team then rushed, rushed ahead and was you know, doing a bunch of great work integrating in, in EVM and so forth. But we, we were making a deliberate trade-off of we want to get something live. The most important thing is to get an EVM live, and then we'll figure out how to position it competitively. It turns out that you know, we have some, some rock stars in-house and really smart people who – just decided to take it upon themselves to think, how do we make this thing competitive from the start? Let's not wait. Like, let's actually think about what we need to do. So as we started crafting KPIs on the things that we want to accomplish with the CBM, uh, the teams just started, this had ripple effects into, uh, you know, technical parameters like TPS. Like what, what kind of, uh, you know, block cycle time do we want to make this thing competitive? What other things would be valuable in making this thing competitive? You know, beyond uh, just, 
going out and p- putting a bunch of investment in there, getting business relationships, getting existing smart contracts to port over, getting key partnerships. We're also thinking, you know, at a deep level about technical technical parameters, and then beyond that, this um, differentiating message for the ecosystem. I tell you, like I, I, I really hone in on that, sec- you know, security or like you know, s- secure dependable ecosystem message just because that's kind of who we are. It fits with our culture. It fits with our tech. Um, but it, it's kind of a bold claim and it's something that we really have to back it up if we're going to make it. But we're open to other things. And I, I guess the bottom line is we need to figure out um, beyond just, you know, TPS and block cycle rates, how are we going to make this thing competitive? We're going to be investing heavily into it and we will make it competitive. Uh, I think you're starting to see some uh, elements of that emerge already, but there's still more to come. And I, I would actually like our community to weigh in more so that we can hear what you guys think about that. Great answer, of course. Um, so the next question is, is the target launch date for the EVM still next year? Oh, for sure. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, you know, we're going to be at a point where like milestone three is going to be delivered in say mid-November. So I, you know, <laughs> knock on wood there, at mid-November. So from milestone three delivery, it's really just about uh, QA testing, auditing, find fix. Um, and that's something we're going to tackle very aggressively and take it very seriously. So you can see taking another few months to get to market from there, entirely reasonable, but it's something, this is just the way we do business now. We're not going to go live with something that could have issues. We're not going to go to live with something prematurely. We're going to make sure that what we do go live with is something that we have strong confidence in because we've done a very rigorous, you know, uh, you know, production you know, set of procedures. Uh, that said, uh, the Q1 target that we have set is uh, something that we're, we have uh, confidence in today. And we'll see, you know, I, before I say high confidence in Q1 of next year, let's just see what comes in with QA testing and auditing, but everything's looking good so far. Fantastic. Okay, so the final top question, uh, what is the timeline for Token Mint NFT mainnet release? Oh man, maybe I should I should punt that one to Angie since she's the, the master. Sure, there. <laughs> sure, uh, sure. Um, so yeah, like like I said, in the upcoming few weeks, I um, don't like to give exact dates just because we have the audit as a dependency and we take audits very very seriously. And it's just not about uh, okay, let's have this audited and then once it's back, it's, we can release. It's it goes through a whole process of reviewing, testing, trying to find every single piece of, uh, of what could be a security vulnerability or compromise. So um, this is the reason why it's, it's taking a few more weeks. I would maybe say November, early November. That's what I can uh, say uh, right now. But again, it, it depends on the audit and, and how well that goes. So hopefully you will have NFTs on main and really, really soon. You have my word. Otherwise, what else can I do? <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> it is amazing the the difference in the amount of beans spilled on our Twitter spaces versus the Discord calls. Um, <laughs> but anyways, everybody, thank you so much for joining us for Horizon Weekly Insider number 158. Of course, the playback will be available on our podcast as well as blog format uh, later on this week. Thank you all so much for joining. Have a great week. <laughs>